Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Somto Adjulu Chuku um, from VX Studios. We're excited to introduce you into an exciting and exhilarating world of African animation, um, led by these amazing people I have with me. Um, to my left, I have Neodo Essa of FX Studios, live in Mozambique. I also have Mohamed Ghazala of uh, Ghazala Studios from Egypt. I have Vanessa Sinden of Triggerfish Animation Studios from Cape Town in South Africa. And finally, last but not the least, I have Raymond Malinga from Creature Studio in Uganda. You know, we'll be talking about basically um, the, states, the state of the industry um, and then the, the peculiarities of the industry in each of these various regions and what these studios are doing to create some awesome content to shift the paradigm um, towards African animation. Tell me, um, Mr. Mr. Mohamed Ghazala, uh, I, would, I would definitely like to know what is happening in the space of North, of North Africa in terms of animation. There doesn't seem to be a lot of activity, you know, coming out from there in terms of like short films or, you know, content. Um, can you give us an insight into uh, what the industry out there is like and how studios are thriving in that space? Um, so uh, I would start that uh, uh, this year, actually, 2020, we are celebrating uh, the 85th anniversary of, uh, of animation in Egypt. Uh, since we started in 1935, with, oh, wow. uh, with a, yeah, we we have started with a few immigrants uh, uh, to Egypt at that time who were like uh, fascinated with the animation made by Walt Disney at that time, and they they created their own character called uh, Mishmish. Uh, it was a funny uh, short films uh, sponsored by the family called Frankel Brothers. And uh, uh, for many years, they have produced uh, many short films until 1950s, and they immigrated to France again. And we have to wait until uh, late uh, 1960 to get uh, the first animation made uh, by a real Egyptian. So we, uh, and this was at the time when we have the television. Since that time, we have like a golden era, like since 1990, when we have uh, like a, uh, seasonal uh, TV series of animation made by Egyptian and not uh, dubbed from uh, American or Japanese or European animation. We used to have those uh, uh, anime uh, cartoons and uh, like dubbed in, in, in Arabic or in uh, Egyptian uh, delegate. So uh, since 1990, we have this kind of uh, flourishing of animation made by many animators, uh, uh, specifically in Egypt. Uh, we are actually doing animation not only for our country, but we are doing it for many other uh, countries around us, in Gulf states, uh, uh, like uh, also in, for Libya, for Yemen, for Saudi Arabia, like a lot of those uh, uh, consumers in the, in the region. Uh, as we are speaking Arabic, so we are, we are dealing with more than 300 million, uh, 350 million. Uh, Arab speaker uh, in the region, so our uh, like audience are quite big, and uh, our character is quite famous in this region. So that's why uh, it's not that famous in the rest of Africa. If you speak about, uh, uh, you don't know much about what is happening in North Africa and what is uh, happening in Egypt. Uh, we we are quite limited in in terms of the region. So we don't uh, communicate much with those uh, like uh, francophone or anglophone term of distributing our uh, our films but in 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 term of industry we have a lot of small and big studios are doing uh, a quite uh, uh, advanced level of animation in, in 2d 3d stop motion uh, motion graphic uh, visual effects uh, we have a lot of those uh, experience studios so uh, Plus, we have uh, like at least three or four academies are producing every year graduates in animation department or students who study animation as a major. Well, that's amazing. That's amazing to know like the, the industry has been growing for the past eight, five years and has had so many phases of, you know, structure that exists, not just within the studios, but between studios through the association and everything. That's, that's really impressive. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Mohammed. Vanessa, 
Um, can you really give us an insight into, um, you know, first of all, women in animation is not a lot. It, that's, that's not something you get to see a lot. And that's something that you seem to be championing and driving. And, um, you know, in projects sort of like Mama K Super 4, you know, there was a, there was a show out of women in animation and how the industry is being more diverse and, recept and receptive in terms of gender. And mm -hmm. also even um, talking about, giving us an overview on the journey of Triggerfish. Yeah, thanks, Doctor. Um, gosh, what an absolute privilege to be able to be a part of African women in animation. Um, it started about four years ago um, from the Cape Town Animation Festival. And I was obviously aware of women in animation, which has really started out of Los Angeles, out of Burbank, and, and has branches in Canada and in Europe. And I just recognized that like, there's a real gap for women in the industry, in VFX, animation, commercial work, whatever it is. We're just, from technical to creative to writers, we just aren't connected and we're not talking and we don't know each other as well as we should. And, and there's so few women in the industry. It was just really like an opportunity to get together to have a conversation. And so we did that on social media and at a couple of events, which was um, sponsored by some partners. And it was just so great to see that we're uh, sitting at about 650 members at the moment. And it's just kind of grown organically and it's not like we're official anything. Um, we're just women on the continent, excited about an industry growing and how to help each other and inspire each other and give each other keys and handles and to, to share opportunities really. So that's all it is. Um, it, yeah, it's quite amazing. And, and I'm super privileged to be able to be a part of a team that from South Africa is really pioneering um, authentic, culturally specific content, um, which, which shows a lot of strong women at the lead. We know that women are amazing writers. Who are they? We want to know about them. 750 women applied with scripts that they've written for live action mostly because nobody has really written for animation in the TV space. And so they had to transition into animation. And so all these women submitted samples and we were able to choose um, a whole lot of women. We did many workshops and then we were able to choose eight women for the writer's room for Mama K's Team 4. And we have a head writer in LA who, she happens to be the head writer of the Powerpuff Girls and My Little Pony and some amazing other TV series. And she's helping shape these eight writers with the creator who's from Zambia, Malenga Mulindema. Yeah. She's helped guide these writers into their first 20 episodes. And what a privilege to be a part of this very strong female-led team from around the world and to be a part of the show. And so, yeah, it, Mama K's Team 4 is a real dream come true, which was birthed from uh, Malenga growing up in Zambia, but never really seeing herself on screen, never seeing herself represented, never represented as a superhero, that's for sure. And, and we really strong, I strongly believe that if you don't see yourself represented, then how will you know that you could be that? Mm -hmm. And whether it's, you know, in, as a superhero, as a fictional character, as a coding programming genius, if you don't see that, how do you know that you can be that? And so it's so important for us to empower young girls with content that is inspiring. And yeah. that's really part of the show. Um, and, and Triggerfish is very much a part of like the pioneering in, um, spirit behind animation in South Africa. We really are the biggest independent studio um, in South Africa who's done feature films and TV specials. You know, we've got loads of awards and an Oscar nomination and oh, we're really grateful for all the opportunities we've had. And one of the key things for us is to make authentic content from artists from, from the continent and to be able to now develop our own sort of culturally specific content and have the same global audience go, this is amazing, we want to eat it up. Um, Triggerfish has been, has, is, is definitely an inspiration for what the capacity of the industry can achieve. And, um, and, and you know, the diversity of the stories is something that is, you know, it's very uplifting for the continent, you know, in terms of our brand and in terms of what our talents can achieve here locally. Uh, moving to uh, Nildo, what, what would you say are the challenges that you experience creating content at, or being a studio in Mozambique? Oh, through, throughout these years, I've been mainly doing, I've mainly been doing uh, TV commercials. Uh, I've been doing a lot of PSAs. 
uh, and that's what's keeping us going. Um, you know, it, it's very, it's even more difficult because people don't appreciate animation. You know, most, most people think of animation as being Tom and Jerry or whatever. And, you know, most people here, at least, they think you just press a couple of buttons and well, animation is done, you know, because it's fun. But it's, it's very, very hard to explain to a prospective client what does animation entail? A lot of times, for example, people will ask me, okay, well, how much does one minute of animation cost? I, I usually answer, okay, well, an animation can cost $100 and can cost $1 million because they only see the end product. They don't really see what's behind that end product. You know, it's very different from live action. Live action, you just, you just take a camera and you, you, you basically shoot some actors. Obviously, I'm simplifying things is a lot more complicated than that, but animation is, I think it's harder actually. But I think it was around the year 2010 where I, where I decided to invest I mean, whatever I could on my own projects, on my own IPs, and that's when the troublemakers came to be. And I've been trying to take this project off the ground ever since actually which is really hard because obviously we all have to work uh, in order to eat and that leaves us with little to no time to do our own projects. But it's rewarding at the same time, you know, because you end up seeing your work on TV or whatever, or you end up uh, receiving feedback from professionals and it just dawns on you, you know, it's, well, yeah, you've really come a long way and, but you really have, but you also have a long way to go uh, to achieve what you really want. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to do, you know, yeah. with this project. Yeah, um, well, most so, definitely um, animation, animation for a lot of studios on the continent, it's a labor of passion. And I, I think, yeah. um, I think, um, you know, but, one thing that's also important is that your preparation is an ongoing process and it's going strong and it will meet the opportunities that will take it, you know, to where it needs to be. Uh, Troublemaker is an amazing project. It's been featured in some of some really amazing places, you know, as well. And we were excited to, you know, look at it from a real perspective and also looking at the economics of Mozambique and how that could also affect animation, which also takes me to um, a conversation with, um, Raymond, your project, how I, my, a Calabana at my homework, took the continent by storm. It went everywhere. What was the process of creating <laughs> like, you know, through the adversity of what we know to be the East African animation industry? You know, how did you discover the team? How did you manage the team to make this happen? Yeah, so um, thank you for the opportunity, first of all, and thank you for the kind words, man. So um, I just kind of came in believing that, okay, how do I just start from the ground level and just create something? Like the same way we create our stories is how I just kind of approached my studio. Mm -hmm. So um, I was working at a studio in, in Malaysia and that's where I also got my degree from. And I quit my, I quit my job to come back to Uganda. Mm -hmm. And when I came back to Uganda, it was just my brother and I, um, my brother, um, my younger brother by five years younger than me, he, 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 he was just finishing up his bachelor's in business administration. And so we started off our studio in a garage. And um, my first aim was not to do any project by myself. So by adding my brother, um, we were already two of us. So like it could take away my ego a bit, right? <laughs> so um, yeah, because I knew a lot of stuff, right? But he didn't know anything. But that was a challenge. If I could train him how to do something and understand animation, then probably I could train anybody else in the country, right? <laughs> so I just started from a point of view of training and I trained my brother to write. Um, so it's the first thing I did because um, as, 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 as uh, animators, we usually get too possessive, especially in these virgin industries. We get very possessive of our stories and we want to, I'm the guy who writes, I'm the guy who animates, I'm the guy who does everything, right? So the first thing I did is that I wanted a writer and um, because that would kind of strip me of my ego and he would kind of challenge my jokes, my ideas, you see. And I'm like, you don't know anything in my head, right? But still I'm like, <laughs> okay, um, I still have to train you. So um, 
So what happened is that I, he, I trained him on a color band date, my homework. And I also used the color band date, my homework to form my team and forge my team. So I started hiring some, I would hire anybody who was interested and had the passion and the will to kind of listen to what I was trying to do. Cause I said, this is a cool idea. And we could, I just told them all we have to do is get one award. That's all I wanted. I only wanted one award an award locally in our country. And so I got a couple of uh, diploma students who are finishing up from a local um, institution here. And I trained them to kind of appreciate the process and pipeline of large scale production. Because here we had like these short form ads similar to what these guys have been saying, like ads, um, PSAs. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's quite a different discipline and mindset to understand a large scale production because you have to rely on the other guy to prepare the rig for you right and the rigger has to understand that the animators are relying on it so it's like it's like a different kind of pipeline you can't do it alone and so it was a template for what i'm envisioning my studio being um forging these attitudes of teamwork pipeline and production and uh, just discipline to get a large project off the ground so I, over the years, it took two years to make the six minutes of film for Calabandi did my homework. But when people tell me, oh, it took too long, I'm like, um, it, took, it took long to form a team, right? Um, and uh, yeah, we ended up with like seven, with seven people. Um, and ironically, we never won any award in Uganda, but we won <laughs> in other places. Um, but um, yeah, and the thing is that uh, I feel like we, 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 it, what it took was, I think, challenging my ego, right? Uh, that was like the first thing. And also just uh, the, the love, the love that I put into my stories, I had to put it into building the studio itself as well. Um, and building and training a person who is eager to learn, um, but might not have had the opportunity. And so what I did is that I already, I had the feeling that I knew how to animate, right? That wasn't my problem. My problem was understanding business, company structures, team structures. So I would spend more time trying to figure out that stuff, right? Instead of trying to figure out the animation stuff, which is stuff that I felt like I would do even if the other stuff didn't work out. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah that, that's what it took. And like, I came in kind of like not really looking around the, the, the region that much. I had an idea of what people were doing, but the most prominent studio I knew was doing ads. And I said, there was an opportunity to, to do something in the form of a, a high quality short film by, by our standards, maybe. And that would help us leapfrog as a new studio and leapfrog all these guys who had been there for much longer than us. So that was our strategy. And so, yeah, I'll just like, I will, I'll keep it short. Like, <laughs> that, yeah. that's it. I mean, given a, given a West African perspective, I'm Somto, I, I work in a studio called VX Animation, um, which, mm. we have, uh, which we have a department called VX Studios now. One thing that is always um, evident to, for our studio is to um, always really find and look at the market according to what it is and not try to exactly mold it to what we want because it's easier to work with what exists and um you know kind of float that into um into um, what we're looking for which is our long-term vision so currently we're a development studio so what we do is we develop ideas and we develop products and we're not exactly trying to create anything or produce anything on uh you know on a long-term scale because you know we don't have uh, funding for that and neither do mm. we understand our ecosystem within West Africa Nigeria doesn't exactly advise that as a viable option for an animation studio business um, so um, but we've managed to uh, connect with um, industries which um, favor our industry and still give us the propensity to tell stories in entertainment and what we did was to connect with the music industry and that has given us an opportunity to project our art and at the same time also tell stories um, because these music, this, this music actually means storytelling, not just a narrative for an advert or, or something. Um, so that has been a great outlet for the studio while we, 
you know, buckle down and develop ideas and content. You know, Vanessa, um, one thing that we've realized that Triggerfish does well is um, creating a, an ecosystem of, of financial equity and security for their projects, even before they start the project at all. What was the journey into getting into that space where um, a lot of these corporations um, understood that this is a studio that we trust and, you know, we want to um, go with? Um, what was also the, what's the preparatory process in terms of actually um, taking your ideas from just a synopsis, you know, to getting the right distribution partners, you know, to getting it funded, um, and then to now getting, um, you know, international talents like voiceover actors like Samuel L. Jackson, you know, which mm -hmm. you have to actually be part of productions. What's that experience like? Um, gosh, the experience is hair raising because as each and every person on the panel has expressed, it's really hard, you know, pioneering as independent studios, as independent um, creators, trying to get your film, your, your, your projects funded. It's really, really hard. And, and trying to put talent in studio, talent who can help you get that made it is so tough. Because developing content like you guys have been doing, Sumter, it costs money. So you have to service your and you have to do commercial work just to keep going and triggerfish's key idea which was really a breakthrough it was in 2015 um was to literally take two people myself and anthony and a couple of um junior artists and just to put some money behind the development team very small but let those let that team run with some ideas let them run with the story lab let, let them run with all the efforts they have trying to bring partners to the pro table, bring talent to the table. That's all they do. They don't actually create a, a film. They don't produce anything. They're just simply developing, working with writers, working with artists, connecting all the dots. And it's, you know, it feels tough because you're pouring money into something that's not earning money. But as a business model, you need to do that. You need to develop work. And because yeah. we took that fall after Kumba, we had no work, the entire team gone overseas. Um, and so really dark days. And so, uh, you know, from that development space, we recognized there's a strong desire for African content. We want to be a part of that space. We want to tell some unique stories and we want to take it to the world. Raymond, Raymond, Raymond. Yo. Your new project. <laughs> this secret project that you're not telling us. Yes. <laughs> I see <laughs> you, this secret project that you're not telling us about. Oh, I'm going to draw it out of him. Tell me about the craziness and the sweet craziness. Let me let me let me let me be specific. The sweet crazy that you okay. guys are okay. right now at the studio, and also tell me about um, you know what you had to do step by step to make sure that this process was um, one that you could hold close. Being a new studio, this is our fifth year, right? Uh, I think we're the youngest studio. I'm, I'm representing the youngest studio here on this panel. Right, I don't know, um, but uh, but the thing is that I started identifying some things when we were working on the animated series, um, and I was trying my best not to make uh, what I would say um, were mistakes that other people made before me, and also just trying to learn uh, what could we do differently. So some of the things that I I I, I noticed was, of course, this financing. That's one of the biggest problems. Right. Um, then, uh, but, but then I, I, I also recognize that financing might not be the only problem you see, right? Uh, there's just lack of um, how to manage talent, how to develop talent. We don't have this constant, um, we don't have a university chucking out uh, animators here in Uganda. We don't have the money to import the likes of the amazing Gazala here to come in and help us out, right? <laughs> and so, um, so what I started doing is that, um, and, and also I also noticed that producing the pilot and the animated series, uh, who did before, just like what Vanessa said, like most of these studios on broadcast networks, they, they want to develop it with you, right? And so if we develop the pilot, someone will be like, but you have already kind of established to the world that that's what it's supposed to be and when we don't feel part of it. So, I started taking a step back and started deconstructing my studio. 
And so part of this sweet craziness has been figuring out everything that has nothing to do with the animation, uh, the networking, the broadcasting, what it takes to actually get into a studio's, um, a studio's office, right? All those things. And, 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 and I also realized, um, and I'm still realizing this as I go on, that I can't do all of those things. Because you see, Vanessa is on call, Stuart isn't. So I, I, I'm on this journey of just trying to, 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 to deconstruct my studio. Recently, I got a very harsh truth, right? Um, which was that uh, some friend of mine said that part of being a pioneer is accepting that the revolution and change that you want to see might not happen in your lifetime. And it's something that I have been struggling to make peace with, but knowing it has kind of made me understand what my role might be. Um, I, I don't know what my role is going to be. If I'm, I'm, I just count my blessings. The fact that I go to film in Cannes, I just say, I thank God. The fact that you guys even care to be, people care to be listening to me right now, I just count okay. my blessing. So, so the thing is like, like I, I, I just feel like um, every opportunity I get right now, um, I'm, just, I'm just taking hold of it and playing my role in the, in the books of history. That's what I'm doing. I totally understand that, bro. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, I appreciate you for coming from that angle where we understand and definitely um, um, get it in terms of, you know, you're beginning to discover uh, animation is, you know, so many different departments and, you know, so many different people working to make a process um, significant. And that's the beauty of it. It's, the, it's how a cluster comes together and then each part must function you know, um, in, in a symbiotic nature with the next one, you know, there is no autonomy, you know. Um, so uh, so every, everybody's role is as important as the next person's role because the next person's job is going to cause a disruption in the next person's job. So it's the, it's the one business where everyone is a leader. And that's what is so amazing. Um, yep. Um, with that said, thank you so much, everyone. It's been an amazing session. Um, with me today, we had Nildo Essa, Mohamed Ghazala, Vanessa Sinden, and Raymond Omega. Um, welcome to the to the uh, to the Animate Africa panel, and uh, we're happy to have shared with you our culture um, and our stories. And see you next time.